One of the biggest roadblocks that I see for many mandolin players is figuring out how to use consistent pick directions. Basically how to line up your downs and your ups with the rhythm of the music to best communicate the feeling of what you're playing. And this isn't just an issue for beginners. I see a lot of intermediate and even advanced players who are still struggling with this issue. So if you're thinking right now that this video isn't for you, think again. I'm going to tell you why this is so important, we're going to break things down, and I'm going to throw a bunch of right hand exercises at you at the end of this video to help you get out of any rut that you may be experiencing right now. Before we get started, do me a big favor and hit like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more mandolin videos like this. Also, you can head over to patreon.com slash davidbenedictmandolin for a PDF copy of the transcription for all of these exercises here. Okay, so pick directions, right? I think part of the reason why this is so confusing is because there are some prominent mandolin players out there who took some different approaches to the right hand. Take for instance the father of bluegrass, Bill Monroe. He tended to do a lot of consecutive downstrokes where other mandolin players might not. Another cutting edge mandolin player was Jesse McReynolds, who pioneered his own style of cross picking using multiple ups and multiple downs while playing eighth notes across many different strings. However, I'd say that these are exceptions to the rule. If you take a look at some of the most prominent bluegrass mandolin players out there today, you'll see that they adopt an alternating technique. They're always alternating between down and up at a steady, consistent rate, no matter what rhythms they're playing. All these players are using a technique that some people call the alternating pick stroke theory. And I know that sounds super fancy, but the theory is really simple. The basic idea is to always alternate your hand in time with the music, making sure that your downstrokes fall on the numbered beats in the measure and your upstrokes in between the beats. This is the technique we'll be taking a look at today. And though I mentioned there are exceptions to this rule, I think you have to start here first. All those other variations are born out of this one technique. So it's really important to master this before moving on to any others. Let's just stop and think about why this is so important. I think there are at least three reasons why many mandolin players choose to use this alternating approach. Let's take a look at each. First, speed. This may seem like a given, but you can't play very fast if you're only using consecutive downstrokes or upstrokes. <laughs> So in order to play at these faster bluegrass tempos, we have to alternate to be able to keep up. Next, this alternating technique actually helps us play in time better because we're always moving our pick hand at a consistent rate in time with the music. If you think about it, we're actually physically embodying the tempo of the music. Do you remember those old mechanical metronomes that some people used to have? Imagine your pick hand is like the arm on that metronome. It's always moving back and forth at a consistent rate with the music. And lastly, when you alternate in a consistent way like this, you're going to be able to accent the music better. Our downstrokes are always going to be stronger because of gravity, right? So we want to use that to our advantage by playing our downstrokes on the numbered beats in the measure. Those are the stronger rhythmic parts of the music that we're playing. Also, in traditional music, we tend to swing the rhythm a little bit. We don't play things really robotic and straight like this. But if we swing the eighth notes now, it feels a lot more natural. We do this by adding a little extra time to the first eighth note out of every pair. But the handy thing is, if we are alternating like we've been talking about, our downstroke should always be falling on those longer notes. That's why it's so important to keep this pattern going. If you break the pattern, it's going to be a lot harder to keep that swing feel going. OK, grab your mandolin, and let's actually try this out a bit. The first challenge to this technique is figuring out what to do when you encounter some different rhythms. But the trick is to always keep your pick hand alternating no matter what. That way you can actually count out the rhythms of the notes you're playing as you move your hand. Let's take 4-4 four, four time, and if we start alternating on our open D string, we'll be playing eighth notes. And if you think about it, if we put our downstroke at the very beginning of the measure, we'll always be alternating with our downstrokes falling on those numbered beats like we mentioned. 
Now, if we start playing longer rhythms, we still wanna keep our hand alternating at the same rate. Here, we're playing quarter notes, and we're actually moving our hand twice for every note that we're playing. We still wanna play these notes with downstrokes since they fall on the beats in the measure, but now we're moving our hand up away from the strings in between notes to get ready for the next note. If you think about it, a quarter note is twice as long as an eighth note, right? So it would make sense to move your hand twice for these quarter notes because you're moving your hand in a currency of eighth notes. And that's an important thing here. We wanna keep our pick hand alternating away from the strings on these longer notes in order to figure out how long we should wait before playing the next note. In other words, you're subdividing all these rhythms by eighth notes. All you have to do is figure out how many eighth notes would fill in the space of this note that you're playing. So for a quarter note, you would move your hand twice. For a dotted quarter note, you would move your hand three times. For a half note, four. For a whole note, eight, and so on and so forth. Try it out on these four different examples. But the cool thing about this technique is that my hand should look the same no matter what I'm playing here. So if you were to see me play through these examples without being able to hear me, you shouldn't be able to tell a difference with how my pick hand is moving. All I'm doing is applying my pick to the strings at different times. Okay, so far we've only been working on a single set of strings, but the last challenge to the alternating pick stroke theory is making sure you're staying consistent with your pick directions as you go from one string to the next. So I've worked up a bunch of right hand exercises for you. I think I've covered just about every string change possible in these. And it may be tempting to use consecutive downs or consecutive ups to get from one string to the next, but as we've discussed, this is gonna slow you down in the end. We're only using eighth notes here, so we'll be alternating for every single note that we play. Let's try them out. So my hope is that once you've got these exercises down, you won't have to think about your pick directions quite so much anymore. That was my experience when I was first getting this concept under my belt. It was such an enlightening moment when I realized all I had to do was keep my pick hand moving and then I could just play the rhythms when I heard them. It's kind of like flying. I don't know how to describe it. It's such a good feeling. And I really want you to have that feeling too, just because it, it makes playing mandolin so much more enjoyable. But to get there, you have to start really slow. And a word of advice here, don't cut yourself any slack in this area, because if you realize that you're playing with the wrong pick strokes, but you don't fix the problem, you'll be building up bad habits, which will be really hard to break down the road. Well, there you have it. Probably more information on pick directions than you ever hope to hear, but I hope this was helpful. And if you like this video, head over to my YouTube page or my Patreon site for a lot more mandolin content. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.